And I was sitting and I was saying, God, you know, you always give me solutions. Give me a solution. And the solution he, he told me was to go and ask this particular apostle to be my father. But when I went and I sat with him, because I know myself, just like you must be out there. And you know, the, the book says, this book that I'm about to quote says that when people hear the, that whole father-son thing, everything arises and people are upset because of how much hurt has been caused. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sunday Sermon. You're watching Just Angie. My name is Angie Morenga and welcome. Today, I want to talk about something that's, hey, it's a very... I would say it's a very sticky situation, but anyway, about the father-son relationship. So I'll start today. I don't know how I'm going to continue, but I just want to point out some things about this father-son relationship on the earth as it is in heaven. And I'll read from Matthew 21, verse 1 to 7, which is always given by my spiritual authority as the SI unit for the father-son wineskin and relationship. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her, and tie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them, and they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the tree, spread them on the road, and the crowds went ahead of them. And those that followed shouted, Hosanna, the son of David. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed are you, he is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowd answers, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So the, the, the scripture, Matthew 21, verse 1 to 7, but I've read up to verse 11, is a picture of what the father and the son should be um, on earth as it is in heaven, where the, the father carries the son into Jerusalem, into um, a place where they were stirring, um, stirring up the, na the, the, the city, and I feel making an impact. There was an impact that was going to be made. But this impact was actually the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I feel like there's a, there's a way that we need to do this father-son wineskin um, because it's important. Uh, because in my own life, if I talk about my own life, is that um, for very long I've resisted having a father uh, spiritually because of the abuse that I have seen and watched fathers take through their sons. I think also because I was coming from a different mindset. Um, I was coming from the world into the club, so I didn't even understand the, the order of things and how things are supposed to be done. I had no clue. And that has helped me because I just went. Um, I just, you know, just focused on, on going, on doing what I felt the Holy Spirit was telling me to do. And that's why for me, uh, being Holy Spirit led is very, very important because we must be led of the Spirit um, because the Holy Spirit lives inside us. So I was very averse to having a father-son relationship. And that's why I say this might even be a very long series. Uh, but I wanted to bring out some points which I think I see every day um, in our situations. Sometimes also I feel like people do things because they don't know or they don't know better. And I've also learned that we do a lot of things based on our father who art in America. I don't know what that, why that is to the church in Africa. There's a father who art in America and we just seem to ape and to copy and to flow. But on the other side of that, I must say, is that every move of God starts in the United States of America. We still have not understood why, but they all look like they start there. Therefore, there's a flow. There's something about that nation. There's something about the foundations. There's something about that God moves there and then it spreads to the world. But then again, you see when something also negative happens there, maybe it's also their very serious culture set as I was thinking, because I think of the MTN culture. I mean, there's so MTV culture. There's so many cultures, you know, that uh, that impact, that arise from the from the U.S. and impact the world, cultures from Hollywood, you know, that set the standard of our lives. So maybe that's 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 one way, but we need to look into it. So I love to be Holy Spirit led. So even how I came to now asking um, my father to be my father was by revelation. 
I had, in, I had, in, in, I had, in, oh, some things had happened to me, and I was sitting and I was saying, God, you know, you always give me solutions. Give me a solution. And the solution he he told me was to go and ask this particular apostle to be my father. But when I went and I sat with him, because I know myself, just like you must be out there, and you know, the the book says this book that I'm about to quote says that when people hear the that whole father-son thing, everything arises, and people are upset because of how much hurt has been caused. But for me, I was sure. Thank God I'd been walking with God, I'd been walking in a relationship with God for a long time, and I know how I hear him, I know how he speaks to me. So I heard him very clearly. He said, this one now requires you to go and ask um, this particular person to be your father. And I was like, Lord, you cannot be serious. Are you serious? Where we are reached now, this is where we're going. But one of the things that you learn about me is that or the biggest gift that God has given me is to obey him. So obedience is it, and off I went. And I remember even when I was walking, because we were meeting for lunch, I was walking to the company, I was like, I wonder whether he knows that I'm going to ask him this question. But later, after lots of conversation, he already knew. He already knew that was where I was going. But in true Pastor Angie fashion, me, I'm like the Bereans. We must test the spirit. So first of all, I asked him about a thousand questions. I was like, hey, Pastor Angie. But I had to because it, it's like um, doing your due diligence. So I wanted to know before we get into this alignment or even how this alignment is going to work, what, what do we need to do? And what I love about, um, what I loved about his responses, well, first of all, he said, okay, let's, let's do a trial period from, I think, October, October, November, December to January. Let's do a four month trial period. So that's just a trial period. So I was like, excellent. And then I wanted to question some of his doctrine and I felt his doctrine and my doctrine were aligning. I was very bold to say, me, you, you will not castrate, smother, try to, mm -mm, I don't want to do those things. I, I'm not going down that road, which was good for the four month probation period. And then I remember, I think from October, he said to June, so he said, first we do a probation period of four months. Then he said from October to June, which was exactly nine months, in that nine months, a true test of whether this father-son wineskin was the, was, the, was the real deal would be the miracles that would take place. And I think that's very amazing. So even if you're out there and you're dissatisfied or you're feeling something is not right, with every interaction that you have and every engagement, and I say that this to my own sons also, is that there has to be results. There has to be evidence of that relationship. I'm reminded, it's just dropped in my spirit, when I started taking, and there were women through the, what now is called the Purpose and Leadership Forum in my living room for one year, I would call them sons, and they would insist and say daughters. And I wouldn't even know, I, I was wondering, where, where was that revelation coming from? But very strongly in my spirit, I would tell them, no. God is calling you sons. And it is years later that I began to understand the son analogy. So son is genderless. You know, it's, it's even a father is genderless because I'm a father. I'm a father to many. So it's genderless. And I don't know why that just dropped in my spirit, so I wanted to say that. But it, you know, sometimes when things come in your spirit and you're wondering why, I think for me this one is like maybe 10 years later, that true, that, that what God had said became a truth that now I had evidence of about that they are sons. Uh, whether they are male or female, they are sons. Whether we are male or female, we are fathers, spiritual fathers, spiritual authorities. So that has happened. So between the period of October to June 1st, there's no denial. And not only to myself, but to the sons also in the house, there have been many miracle signs and wonders that God has come through. And that's one sign. But I wanted to, when I started reading this book by Dr. Sai Gov Gov Govenda, I wanted to, I was amazed at how he's began by saying what is the negative, um, how this whole father-son issue became what it is. So I'm not going to be able to get through all of them. I see there's a lot. But let me just see what he says. He says, the father-son wineskin is a new wineskin of this present reformation. So I'm glad that we're in a reformation and we all know that. Reformation is what happens and must happen with revival. You can't have reformation without revival. You, if, you have rev if you have revival without reformation, then the revival doesn't last. You just have pockets and pockets of revivals, but no reformation. Reformation is where the strategies come in, is where the instructions come in, is what we need to do to ensure that there is 
there is structure, systems, there is a fixing of broken systems, there is, there is the fixing of systematic poverty with systems and structures and methodology that is gained from the father. So this wineskin is totally different from the abusing, sh abusive shepherding movement propagated in the USA during the 1970s. And this abusive shepherding movement's motive was to control the son, to prevent an autonomous relationship with the Lord, and there was an overemphasis on obedience to the shepherd of the local church. The movement was ca characterized by taking oaths, vows, and the signing of covenants. But in 1976, the founders of the shepherding movement, which I loved, acknowledged their error and publicly repented. In the West, he says, people go ballistic when they hear the word father mentioned because it projects the hurts caused and abuses experienced by the shepherding movement into the present wineskin. And as a result, there's a reaction that is not very gracious. But he's pointed out some, and that's why I say I don't have to, I won't be able to go through all of them, but the characteristics of this leader who is an old wineskin. Remember, I've done a Sunday sermon about being new wineskins and new wine being poured out. So maybe I'll just do five and then I'll do maybe some more later. But the characteristics of a leader of, who is operating under the old wineskin is not a friend to the people in a biblical sense. They withhold information from people. It's amazing. The reason for withholding information is to protect their position as a leader. So they're insecure about their leadership. There's no intimacy between the people and the leader. And that I find crazy. And you know, for me, I think even I, I wouldn't even be able to get past this point. Because I remember, for me, my ministry is very different. And for me, my ministry is about relationship and growing intimacy. Sometimes, I must be truthful, I see where the old wine skin doesn't want this intimacy. Because let me tell you, getting intimate with the sheep has its own messes. You get too close, too familiar. Respect is lost. Abuse happens even now to the father, let alone to the son, because you get too close and too familiar. So sometimes I understand why they don't want to be intimate. I also find myself, there are times I feel, oh, Pastor Andrew, you're becoming, you're becoming hardened. Because you know, people can do things to you till you say, hey, please, it's never that serious. Let's just leave it. What? No. Or you open up yourself to people and they hurt you. Or they see, like I've said that before, what is, so, what is wrong with Pastor Angie, but they don't see what is right. There's no balance. There's no balance for if this relationship went wrong, what are the right things that she did? So that we can have a balance. Because it cannot be all bad. Or you get too close and people get to know too much about you. And it's too late to build the walls. So sometimes I get it. Anyway, we're supposed to be intimate with our people. I think that's what these people are saying. And the leader imposes titular authority and the whole system is driven by a so-called professional relationship. And the people remain because of loyalty to the institution and their friends in the church. I think that's a good thing to say, you know, because I think God is really redefining the church. There's a book I read once, Permission to Do Church Differently, which is good. I mean, there's so many different expressions of church. Right now, even I feel, I hear the government is trying to control church, you know, and trying to say what pastors can have. You can't do that. I have a calling. How do you define my calling to a degree? You can't do that. A calling is a calling. And anyway, I just think, probably need to do some more research and thought about it and pray about it. But you have problems when the government tries to control the church. The church is God's body. He's the head. How do you control it? And control it? How do you control anointing? You can't control it. It's God given. So we've got to find a different way to tackle this issue. There's an issue, but I feel it has to be tackled very differently. Anyway, let me stick to my lane. Where was I? I was saying that we cannot be in church because of our friends. We cannot be in church because it just feels right. I feel like this. Whatever move of God that is, is taking place is going to shake people out of your comfort zones and you have to be shaken. You can't be in a church because of your friends. If you're feeling, but there's also something I want to say, we still have those, let me tell you, we have to honor. Honor, let me tell you, do not bring disorder in any way. 
The Bible says, honor your father and mother so that it may go well with you. He's referring to both the spiritual and the physical. You must honor. And even if you feel that your spirit is not at rest and you want to make a transition, you must do it honorably. I'll never forget the words that Pastor Moridi Wanjao said to me when, when, when there's a good father, he called me one day and he said, I can sense that you want to shift, uh, Pastor Angie. And he said, let me bless you so that it may go well. Let me release you honorably. And he did. So in all this and all that I'm going to share, because I really have to do this series now, because we have to talk about the old wineskin and the new wineskin. We need to talk to you as a father because I feel God is also creating you to be a father. He's preparing some of you out there to be fathers. And it's fathers in the marketplace, fathers in the community, fathers in the church, fathers in ministry, physical fathers. My goodness. Is that we need to study the old because the old has gone. So we need to say, hey, we don't set ourselves to that pattern. And what I, why I like studying this, see I haven't even gotten past point number one, is because I catch myself. I have to catch myself because I, I have to speak to myself. Paul said, lest I teach other people and me myself, I'm not aware or I'm not following in the teachings of what I'm teaching. So I like to catch myself. I like to read something like this so I say, I don't want to become that. So that any time I feel that I'm, it, I'm getting there, I, I remind myself, you can't go down that road. You know, I can't go back there, but this is, this is just amazing. It says the father said, so in case you want to read it, there we are. I'm amazed. It was a gift from my spiritual father. And I've just started reading it and my spirit is leaping. And um, anyway, that was point number one. Hey, there's a lot to go here, but um, we must understand this old wineskin so that we don't become it and we must become a new wineskin. Wow. Wow. Sometimes they stay out of fear. Fearing that some calamity will befall them if they leave. The believers are seen as clients. And if he is friendly, his motive is to strengthen his client base. Wow. I almost feel like crying. Crying. What we have become. What we have become. Let's pray. First, let's say the salvation prayer because we need to become a new wineskin. Um, one of the ways of becoming a new wineskin is by, is by getting saved. So let's say after me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, to be the Lord and Savior of my life. I ask to be a new wineskin so that the old is gone and the new has come. I want to experience you. I want to become new. I want to be newly birthed in you and for you and through you so that I too may birth what you have ordained for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And um, please uh, find a good church. They are good churches. And the church resonates with your spirit and grow. Um, and I feel like saying, just have the right mindset. Have the right mindset about church. Uh, be honorable. Let it be a place of learning and a place of growth. And a place of hearing the Holy Spirit. And you relying on the Holy Spirit. And... and um, and be like the Bereans, testing every word. Yeah, and going in intimacy with God. Let me pray. Father Lord, I thank you so much. I thank you for the old wineskin and the new wineskin. I remember learning about it in Bible school so much. But I feel there's a reality because um, we have wronged you as the body of Christ as, and as... Um, as fathers and we want to get away from the old and we want the new so that we can access everything that God has for us. I pray for this first point. Anyone who is in a church because they fear, 
that Lord you would speak to them because the Bible says you have not given us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power of love and of a sound mind but that we would also I feel like examine break down evaluate what is taking place and follow the Holy Spirit because we have the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us and if by any way even myself we become a leader who is in that way looking at people as a client or we don't want to be intimate with the, with the, with the, with the, with the congregation with the sheep that you've given us let us also examine ourselves father but i know that even as fathers we can be hurt by our children until we don't want to be close to people or we become bitter and hardened of heart and say it doesn't matter they're never going to change whatever it is lord speak to our situation concerning fatherhood and concerning the father son wine skin and the father son relationship so that when we get the father son relationship correct they can be a stirring in the nations in the community in the organizations in the continent in the church so that we may fulfill the purpose and the plans that you have for us in jesus name i pray amen